Part of the magic of this film is that Chuck Smith and Lonnie Frisbee had absolutely nothing in common. Nothing, except for one thing, their love for Jesus and their desire to serve him even in their weaknesses. And it was these two real, complicated, imperfect men that God used to set into motion the greatest spiritual awakening in the modern history of America. A movement that brought tens of millions of lost souls into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, myself and my parents included. Could God be preparing to unleash the greatest spiritual awakening in the history of America? One in which millions upon millions of Americans will repent of their sins and place their faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? Could God be preparing to pour out His Holy Spirit in such a prophetic and powerful way that we're on the cusp of one of the most radical revivals in the history of the American church? One that will bring a fresh wind of holiness and a new passion for fulfilling the Great Commission? A revival that could not only change the destiny of the United States, but of Israel and the world as well? And could a major new Hollywood motion picture be one of the tools that God uses to change history? Good evening, and welcome to the Rosenberg Report. Look, something very interesting and exciting is underway in America at this hour, and it's catching my attention right here in Israel. And tonight, I want to examine it more closely. And I'm going to start with the film. Now, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of Christian movies. Okay, I'm, I'm not saying they're all bad or that God can't use them to save souls and change lives. I'm just saying that for my taste, uh, way too many faith-based films, they're just not that good. But that being said, there's a new movie that releases this weekend that my wife Lynn and I saw recently in a sneak preview version here in Israel, and we were blown away. I mean, we absolutely loved this movie. It was so unexpectedly well done, so emotional, so powerful, mesmerizing, inspirational, and so timely since it tells the story of an astonishing real-life revival that broke out in California 50 years ago, even as an astonishing new revival is breaking out right now in Kentucky. I'm talking, of course, about the new film, Jesus Revolution. The movie stars Kelsey Grammer, the Emmy Award-winning star of Frasier, which for years was the number one show on American television. Lynn and I love Frasier. We've seen every episode and we find Kelsey Grammer absolutely hilarious. Well now, Grammer plays a very different character, nothing like Frasier, and he absolutely nails the role. He plays Chuck Smith, the straight-laced, buttoned-up, flawed, but well-meaning pastor of a small and dying church in Southern California in the early 1970s. He sees the country and the world going to hell in a handbasket and a whole generation of young people hooked on drugs, sex, and rock and roll. He doesn't get them, and frankly, he's repulsed by them, but he's also discouraged about how little impact he's having for the kingdom of Christ. He's confused about what he's doing wrong, and he's seriously considering giving up on ministry altogether. Now, enter Lonnie Frisbee. He's a flawed, flamboyant, but immensely lovable hippie street preacher who's played by Jonathan Rumi, best known for playing Jesus in the runaway hit TV show, The Chosen. Part of the magic of this film is that Chuck Smith and Lonnie Frisbee had absolutely nothing in common. Nothing, except for one thing, their love for Jesus and their desire to serve him even in their weaknesses. And it was these two real, complicated, imperfect men that God used to set into motion the greatest spiritual awakening in the modern history of America. A movement that brought tens of millions of lost souls into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, myself and my parents included. I love this next clip in which Lonnie Frisbee tries to help Chuck Smith see what he and his church are missing. Take a look. Jeanette tells me you're a pastor. Yes, currently. I know we must seem pretty strange, but if you look a little deeper, if you look with love, 
you'll see a bunch of kids that are searching for all the right things, just in all the wrong places. So to answer your question, how do I describe my people? They're sheep without a shepherd, chasing hard after lies. And the trouble is, your people reject them. So I ask you, Pastor, how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? We can only walk through doors open to us. And your church? Well, that's a door that's shut. Talk about your new movie. It's called Jesus Revolution. Well, you got two choices. Cocaine Bear. <laughs> <laughs> or the living Christ. <laughs> which, which, which one do y'all go with? Oh my goodness, I never <laughs> thought of that. But yeah. surely, on, you, you on have February twenty fourth, you got options. Everybody's gonna be happy. <laughs> <laughs> you can make some choices. Some for Remember, yeah, yeah. Theater A or Theater yeah. B. Yeah, right. wow. Yeah. Right. Or make a whole or day the guy out of it. that rose from the dead. Oh, yeah. One of the other. Yeah, yeah. Kelsey Grammer isn't kidding. I mean, the way he says it, of course, is hilarious, but it's totally true. There are two major motion pictures coming out this weekend. One is Jesus Revolution. The other is called Yes, exactly, Cocaine Bear. It's about a real life black bear in the 1970s who somehow ate a duffel bag filled with cocaine. Now, in the fictionalized Hollywood version, the bear goes on a murderous rampage in a small Georgia town. The filmmakers are calling it a dark comedy, and it's dark indeed. So there's your contrast, there's your two movies. Now, what intrigues me is this. In an age where so many Americans and so many in the cynical media are becoming so hostile to the gospel message and to the church, why exactly would Emmy award-winning actor Kelsey Grammer want to play a gospel-preaching, Bible-teaching pastor? Grammer's talked about it all week in a series of interviews on all the major TV networks. Let's pick up the conversation he had with Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> what, what drew you to, uh, to do this film? Well, the truth is, I was, uh, I, was, I was having a sort of a meditative evening one night in my home, and I was up pretty late. It was about 3, 4 in the morning. And I started to think, what well, I want to do something worthwhile, something that has a bigger purpose than just me. And uh, I was kind of saying a prayer, I guess. And uh, the next morning, the script lands on my door. And I read it, and I said, That's okay. That's, a sign. That's it, I'm doing this Jesus story. So yeah. It's pretty cool. Grammer also appeared on Live with Kelly Ripa and Ryan Seacrest. And watch how emotional he gets about playing this role, playing the role of Pastor Chuck Smith. Uh, that's a scene from Jesus Revolution. Tell us about it. It's a nice movie. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Really I sweet. mean, yeah. you're tearing up. Yeah. I see you getting emotional. <laughs> what, are, what are you feeling? <laughs> Can I play doctor? Um, what yes, do you of feel? course. Um, I, I, I love this movie. Yeah. I really love it. Um, when, my, when we first saw the first cut, uh, we sat down in our home and, and Kate saw it. She said, oh my God, it's the best thing I've ever done. She started crying. <laughs> but uh, he's, uh, he's a man looking for his own faith and finds it as well. Uh, a man whose church is empty and he can't get uh, traction and he's starting to think he's going to be fired from his job as a pastor, and uh, uh, this hippie comes into his life, and he finds new purpose, and uh, started a movement that is still still going. So I mean, it's, it's extraordinary. True story. Yeah, it's a true story. Chuck Smith, Chuck Smith is uh, the guy I played. He died in uh, 2014, I think. But uh, the number of people who came up uh, and said, oh, you're playing Chuck Smith. Oh, I, I listen to him all the time, or, uh, and they say, uh, He's, uh, he, mar he married us, or uh, I was baptized by Chuck Smith. Uh, you can see this light in their eyes. And... I actually knew Pastor Chuck Smith. He passed away in 2013, but years before that, he invited me to come out and preach several times, in fact, at Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa, California, the very church where this whole Jesus revolution began. And I, in turn, invited him to speak at the Joshua Fund's very first Epicenter Conference here in Jerusalem in 2008, 
when we marked the 60th anniversary of the prophetic, miraculous rebirth of Israel in 1948. I also interviewed uh, Chuck Smith for a series of Joshua Fun videos that we shot years ago. And I can tell you, Kelsey Grammer not only looks like Pastor Chuck, but he really captures Chuck's heart and soul and story. My name's Kelsey Grammer. I'm playing Chuck Smith in Jesus Revolution. I wanted to do something that meant something. It's almost in a minor despair about doing something of value. Does it matter? And then this script was delivered to me the next day. Okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> he's a, a man sort of at a loss. He doesn't really know where he's going and how his church is gonna fare and whether or not he's even gonna remain a preacher. And then this opportunity presents itself to him. Lonnie was this roving hippie evangelist. And when Chuck and Lonnie came together, it was like nitro met glycerin. This kid walks and he thinks, I'm gonna open up the church to this. That's a pretty amazing thing. My stars. Hi, Chuck Smith. My name is Jonathan Rumi. I'm playing Lonnie Frisbee, the hippie street preacher who preached alongside Pastor Chuck Smith. I've never read a script that had a character that was like this. It was just so beautiful to play somebody that had these human weaknesses and flaws, but who was so profoundly gifted in being able to inspire people just by speaking his heart to them. And if God can heal me, he can heal anyone. The dynamite in their relationship was in many ways the origin of a nationwide revolution. What I love about the movie version of it is that Kelsey Grammer and Jonathan Rumi have very much the same dynamic. It is very much like Nitro meeting Glycerin. They fully committed to the role and to the story and to the cause of why we're doing this. And that just leaps off the screen. I think it'll challenge people's notions of the need to be perfect to be a Christian. I hope people feel tearful and joyful all at the same time and maybe inspired to rediscover their own faith. If you look with love, you'll see an entire generation searching for all the right things, just in all the wrong places. What would it take for you, Chuck Smith, to be desperate? This is God's word. Let's open it together. But Jesus Revolution is about more than just two preachers from two different sides of the tracks, as it were. It's also about two young hippie kids. They're searching for truth, for meaning, for purpose, but they're using drugs, they're lost, they're lonely, and they're afraid. And they end up falling in love with each other and getting married, and through the ministry of Chuck Smith and Lonnie Frisbee, they end up falling in love with Jesus and getting saved. It's a beautiful, moving story of love and mercy and redemption. In fact, the whole movie is based on Greg Laurie's memoir. Greg was one of the young people that got saved in that movie, Greg and Kathy. And his memoir is called Jesus Revolution, how God transformed an unlikely generation and how he can do it again today. Over the years, Greg and Kathy Laurie have become very dear friends of mine. Uh, Greg and I have spent a lot of time together over the years in Orange County, California, uh, where he founded and pastors two of the largest and most influential evangelical churches in the world, and where God has raised Greg up to be one of the most effective evangelists in the world, preaching the gospel to stadiums full of people and seeing many come to Christ. We've also spent a great deal of time here in Israel. It's a country that Greg loves dearly, and we've spent a lot of time talking about how the Jesus Revolution not only changed his life, but mine. What's it like to live in Israel now? You guys, you were born where? I was born in the United States, uh, in upstate New York, Syracuse, yeah. and I uh, grew up in the States. My father was Orthodox Jewish, came yeah. to faith in Jesus as Messiah in 1973, wow. thought he was the first Jew since the Apostle Paul who believed this. Because there were so few. Well, he never heard of a Jewish person who believed yeah. that, never met one, wow. and in 1973 there weren't that many. But the Spirit of God was moving, uh, not just among Jewish people, but the whole Jesus movement. Yeah. You got saved in that time. Yeah. Uh, uh, my parents, I, later, you know, a couple years later, 75, as I studied the scriptures, right. I thought, wait a minute, there's not that many Jewish people who believe in Jesus. This is not just a great joy of God's grace right. that he's given me, but it's also a responsibility. How do I reach my people? 
And I absolutely love how Greg and Kathy's remarkable journey to faith is really at the heart of this movie and why they wanted to make this movie in the first place, to tell more people about God's free gift of love and forgiveness. It began as a simple chapel service on the campus of Asbury University, a small Christian college in Wilmore, Kentucky. Students were studying the scriptures and worshiping God as they always do three times a week in chapel, but this time they didn't stop. As we reported on all Israel news, no one wanted to go back to class. They stayed all night, continuing to sing and pray and repent of their sins and confess to each other. And when morning came, they still wouldn't go back to their dorms or to class. Soon, parents, faculty, and staff were joining them, not to reprimand them, but to join the nonstop worship service. Then, students from Christian colleges all over the country began to arrive. And not just students, people of all ages have come. Wilmore, which only has 6,000 residents, has more than tripled in size. More than 20,000 Christians from all over the country and all over the world have come to be part of the revival. It's creating logistical challenges. There aren't enough toilets in the town or parking, yet people keep coming. School administrators are now having to move the worship meetings off campus to larger facilities. And the revival is making national headlines. Fox News, CNN, NBC News, The Washington Post, The New York Post, CBN News. This revival is officially in overflow mode. Look at this line behind me, about a half a mile long. Folks from all over the country waiting patiently to get into Hughes Auditorium here at Asbury University to experience this historic revival for themselves. God is here. God is here and he's working right now. Come get you some. You hear me? It's been just a really hard couple of years. And not just for me, but like a lot of my friends. And I just felt like the Lord was releasing me of a lot of bitterness and anger that I'd had just about all kinds of stuff, even some of it towards God. And so I would say for me personally, the biggest word I can use has been a very, very healing experience yeah. for me. So where is all this leading? Well, Bible prophecy tells us to expect the Holy Spirit will move mightily in the last days of history before Christ returns. In my favorite book of the Bible, the book of Joel, of course, God says this, Blow a trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. Surely it is near. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all of your heart and with fasting, weeping and mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments. Now return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness and relenting of evil. It will come about after this that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind, and your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. Even on the male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Great awakenings are already underway in Iran and communist China, as we've talked about on past programs, and we will even more in the future. So why not in America and Israel as well? Well, that's our show for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Please join me in praying that God would expand the revival that we're seeing in Kentucky and that God would use this Jesus Revolution movie to trigger another Jesus movement and go see it in the theaters right away. I sure hope you're finding these shows helpful. Please invite others to watch. Sign up for our free email alerts at rosenbergreport.tv and subscribe to our YouTube channel. May God use you to be a light in the darkness this week. And Lord willing, I'll see you next week right here on the Rosenberg Report.